So here I am back in the corner of the garage, and you'll recall, maybe you'll recall, when I was trying to cut that chicken wire the other day, and by God, this is supposed to be four foot wire, but it's shrunk down a little bit. 47, go 23 and a half, all right. Anyway, when I was trying to cut that chicken wire the other day, you heard me comment I need a bigger tool. So I figured I better come in here and use a bigger tool instead of fussing around that little old four inch grinder. So you see fellers, sometimes when you want to reach a little deeper, you just got to have a longer tool. Well, today's Friday, the day after Fat Train Thursday, and it was cold, hell we had 36 degree wind chill yesterday morning. And now then we're out here, oh we got some pretty sunshine. It's gonna be in the low 70s, I think. They, they forecasted like 68, but it sure is nice out here, and I'm standing in the shade. But uh, got a guy here, get some more wire run, and uh, get, this, get this garden fence in order, because it's about time to start planting. Now slow down. Dag gum, slow down for just a minute. Whoa, running me death over driving in post. I'm trying to keep up that music. <laughs> anyway, uh, it just seemed like there's always a ton of things to do when you get a pretty day. And one of the things I have to keep in mind is I've got to get this sign done for a buddy of mine. And like I was saying a couple, a few days ago, wasn't really, really warm enough in the shade to paint. 
So I've set this out here to sun, let it warm back up, and I'm going to uh, throw a coat of paint on it right quick. And then we'll get back to driving stakes and stretching wire. I won't bore you with a repeat of the other day. I'm just going to go in there and wipe it down with vinegar and paint thinner and paint the other side. And we'll be back with more fencing here in just a minute. All right, well, we got a coat of paint on it. Let's go do some more fencing. Well, that garden fence just about wore me out. Driving in posts and stretching wire and string and all that. So I took me a break, ran over Lowe's to get some stuff to make a garden gate with. And I hope that you'll like what I've, what I've come up with. Uh, it'll be on the next video. But I thought, I'd, I thought I would round out today, what with it being 420, for all you people out there that like 420. I thought I'd round out the day today and, and, and make a new batch of homemade wine with a flavor I haven't done before. Now people ask me about the juice cocktails and all that kind of stuff and I tell them, I said, look, it's supposed to be 100% juice. Even though you can make alcohol with water, if you want wine, I recommend 100% juice. So, but what I come across today at Aldi while I'm buying some onions, it says 100% juice, cranberry flavored blend of four juices, and it is filtered water, cranberry juice from concentrate, filtered water, cranberry juice concentrate, grape juice concentrate, apple juice concentrate, pear juice concentrate, okay? So, you know... Years ago, when, when we made homemade wine, we used the Welch's frozen concentrate in a can, so what difference does it make? But, uh, I talk to you and I talk to you till my face turns blue, and I still keep getting the same questions. Maybe I ought to, maybe I ought to take off the other videos that maybe don't, aren't as clear. But for those of you that are new to the channel and new to making wine, uh, check this out. I cannot make it any simpler, okay? I mean, I did the one video, wine in 40 seconds. <laughs> and I don't know how long this will take, probably less than that. But let me, uh, uh, we're going to make a batch of wine right now, okay? Right now, out of a two-quart jug of juice. And let me make sure we got close enough here. All right, Popo, what kind of yeast? I don't give a shit. Just get you some yeast in the packets at the grocery store, right up there by the flour where the baked goods are. Oh, but I don't like baked baker's yeast. I prefer winemaker's yeast. Well, just take your, just take your picky little ass right on down the road. I don't want to hear no shit out of you. Oh, but Popo. Don't you use any fancy containers? No, I don't use no damn fancy containers. We're going to make that wine in that bottle right there. Well, don't you need to sterilize it? Why do I need to sterilize it to come from the damn factory? All right, watch what I, what I do, people. I'm going to pour out two cups. Those two cups are your two servings of fruit for the day. I have here one and a half cups of sugar because this two quart bottle is now missing a half a quart. 
Okay? And my recipe is one cup of sugar per quart of liquid. And I say liquid because if you want to do this with water, you can. So, with one and a half quarts of juice, we're going to add one and a half cups of sugar. And my recipe is one fourth of a teaspoon of yeast, one fourth of a teaspoon per quart. And I'm going to just make it a, even half a teaspoon. This is almost going to be two quarts. It's going to be just shy because we're going to leave some head space in here. That's the reason we pour out the two cups. All right, I'm just going to pour a cup and a half of sugar and a half a teaspoon of yeast right into the jug. Papa, I smell mine after three days and it had a funny smell. Well, you ain't supposed to. Leave the shit alone. Just leave the shit alone. Mix your wine up like I'm doing right here. We want to dissolve that sugar. By the way, this is at room temperature, this, this juice is. We're just sitting here. This is not chill. What temperature? Just try to keep it warm. Don't get it hot. Try to keep it warm. The warmer it is, the quicker it's going to make. The colder it is, the longer it's going to take. And you know, you, ideally, you don't want sunlight hitting it. So what? So what I recommend to you is put it, put it somewhere and put a brown paper bag over it. Put it in a closet somewhere. I'm going to put mine in a box, and I'm just going to set it up on top of the refrigerator and leave it alone for four weeks. Now it makes in about three weeks, but by giving it that extra week, any particulates that are in here are going to settle to the bottom and your wine is going to be much prettier. It's going to be kind of cloudy just as soon as it quits bubbling, it's going to be a little bit cloudy, but if you'll give it another few days to settle down, it'll be so pretty. So we're going to come back on May the 20th and uh, check out this wine. All right, now. When you think you've shook it all up and all your sugar's dissolved, you look at it, look down there at the bottom, see if you see any. If you don't see any, you're good. Shake it up a little more. Whatever. You can't shake it too much. You cannot shake it too much initially, but you can't ever shake it again. So this is the only time you get to shake it. Now, the reason it don't look full is because we took out two cups of juice and put in a cup and a half of sugar so we wanted to leave this head space here okay because this is going to really bubble now you loosen the cap a little bit the idea being here we don't need a bubbler we don't need a percolator we don't need tubing running off in a bowl of water all we need is to not allow bugs to enter now watch, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Let me zoom in on this. This is real important. I just loosened the cap a little bit. It's just sitting there. Watch. Watch the cap. See that? With me squeezing the jug, it's it's raising that cap up and letting that letting that air out, okay? Well, by having a little bit loose like that, what's going to happen is, as this makes its gas, it will escape out of the cap, but the cap is set right back down. Boom, it's set right back down and keeping the bugs out. Do not check, do not check it out, do not look at it, do not touch it, do not move it. For four weeks. 
But Paw Paw, it only takes three weeks to make. I want to check it just as soon as I can. No. Leave a shit alone. Listen to me the first time. And then do whatever the hell you want to the next time. But I am trying to tell you how to make a perfect batch of wine. Now, I'm going to set this box up on top of my refrigerator. I'm going to ride on it. Do not touch until 520. And we will check it out. Well, folks, that's all there is to making a batch of wine. And, oh, God, I get so many, so many questions. What about racking it? What about filtering it? How do I store it? And all that. You want to store it, leave it sitting just like it is. Just leave it. Don't touch it. Just leave it. But I want to bottle it. Why? Why? Why do you want to bottle it? I thought you make wine to drink. That's what I do. I make my wine to drink. I don't make it to bottle because I don't make more than I need. Now, I don't make five gallon jugs. You can make a five gallon or a 10 gallon or a hundred gallon batch if that's what you want to do. That's cool, that's your business. I'm not gonna come knocking on your door asking what size batch of wine you're making. You do any damn thing you want to do. I'm just showing you a foolproof way to do it so that your first attempt will be successful and then you'll enjoy a hobby for the rest of your life. But I don't make any until I notice my store of wine, my inventory, start to drop, okay? And I was doing just fine, and then my wife decided she wasn't going to buy wine no more. She liked mine. <laughs> so my wife doesn't buy bottled wine no more. She uh, drinks my homemade wine. So, uh, but you figure if if you're going to go through a, a quart and a half or two quarts here in a, in, a, in a week, then make a batch a week, and you've got fresh wine every week, every week. And, uh, but, oh, but it's so good when it's aged. Fine. Make more. I don't care. Do what you want to do. I'm just trying to show you how to be successful your very first time. Well, folks, for those of you that seen how I do this before, I know it's boring you to tears. I'll let you go. I appreciate each and every one of you very much. Make sure you watch my next video because it's going to have me finishing up the garden fence. And I got the neatest, I hope you'll like, the neatest idea for a garden gate you've ever seen. Folks, y'all have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Bye, everybody.